Kia ora, I'm Shuri Kinnear and these are the latest New Zealand Herald headlines. Authorities are prepared to deal with any disruption caused by anti-government protesters here at Parliament today. A number of streets have been shut off in the area, including the Parliament end of Lambton Quay, Lower Molesworth Street and Kate Shepherd Place. There will be a significant police presence in the area, with officers from outside the capital helping out. But protest leader Brian Tamaki says the group will not occupy Parliament overnight and any violence would be de-escalated. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, who doesn't intend to meet with protesters today, says the Parliament's grounds are open and they're working hard to balance its responsibilities as a democracy. Ultimately, the way in which a, a, a protest conducts itself uh, will ultimately be for the organisers. What we're making clear is that Parliament is a place where we will, of course, continue to welcome peaceful and lawful protest. But again, we're really imploring people, peaceful and lawful. Meanwhile, Wellington Mayor Andy Foster has asked Wellingtonians to be patient. Go about your business in the normal way. Obviously, in that immediate area of Parliament, there may be some issues for a short period of time. But just to exercise some patience, particularly while the march is going through the central city. We'll keep you up to date with the story throughout the day with live coverage at nzherald.co.nz, Facebook and on YouTube. Also here at Parliament today, rogue MP Gaurav Sharma is once again about to face judgment by the Labour caucus. The Hamilton West MP was suspended last week but faces expulsion from the caucus this morning after continually leaking information and making numerous allegations against his colleagues. Ardern and Labour's other 63 MPs will decide whether Sherma's recent behaviour warrants him being exiled from the party. A vote to expel, which is understood to be highly likely, would end Sherma's association with Labour, effectively rendering him an independent MP. More money is on the way for flood-ravaged parts of the country. The Marlborough region will get $100,000 through the government's Merrill Relief Fund, but it's expected that figure will increase. Nelson's getting another $100,000, taking the total through the fund so far to $300,000. Ardern says the money is not designed to be a full recovery fund and it's intended to quickly get money into Merrill Relief Funds to support recovery in very short order. Meanwhile, huge frustration for Far North residents after losing one of two arterial roads connecting Kaitaia with the rest of the world. Slips have closed State Highway 1 through Mangamuka Gorge only 13 months since reopening from a year-long closure. Waka Kotahi says another lengthy closure is likely and a timeline won't be known until geotechnicians complete an assessment. And a woman who police believe may be the mother of two dead children whose remains were found in suitcases stashed at a South Auckland storage facility could face extradition from South Korea. The family member is being sought by South Korean police in connection with the discovery. Her whereabouts are unknown and it's unclear whether she had other relatives with her when she arrived there in 2018. And those are the latest New Zealand Herald headlines. For more and to stay up to date, head to nzherald.co.nz. Kia pai te ra. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. To stay up to date with all the latest news from the New Zealand Herald, click the subscribe button below or check out one of the videos here. And head over to nzherald.co.nz for more details on these stories and more.